Eli Drinkwitz will be our third coach today at SEC Football Media Day's 2023 version. version. Eli has guided Missouri to bowl games in each of his first three seasons. He's only the second head coach at Missouri to do so in the first since the 1978-79 season. The 2022 season featured defensive improvement. The defense in Missouri ranked fourth in the league and 34th nationally. Eli graduated magna cum laude from Arkansas Tech. I graduated summa cum laude from Cortland State, so I think magna is better than summa. But those of you expert in Latin can tell me, and perhaps Eli is. Eli enjoys playing paintball with his team and taking awkward recruiting photos. I only read that which is shared with me. University of Missouri head football coach Eli Drinkwitz, Magna Cum Laude. Great to be here, uh, my third SEC Media Day. Really proud of the work our organization has been putting in and preparing for the upcoming season. Uh, you can never turn back the clock, uh, so all of our focus is on improving our processes for this year. No matter how close our outcomes were last year, it's all about what we're trying to accomplish and prove this year. In the new normal of college football, um, you first got to rebuild your roster. Um, and you, you've got to do that every year starting in December. And the first way to do that is through roster retention. I'm really proud of our staff, organization, and culture that we've created that we return 18 starters uh, from last year's team. Um, that means that those guys believe in our process. They believe in uh, their improvement. They believe in the opportunities that they have uh, at the University of Missouri. And uh, it first starts there. And then you work on adding it through your signing classes, uh, through your high school signees, through your junior college, uh, and then through the transfer portal. We believe we've built a very competitive roster. Um, we have over 32 players who have started four or more games in their college careers uh, in Division I football. And so we believe that we've added the competitive depth necessary uh, to do the things that we need to do for this year. You know, we have most of our production returning on the defensive side of the ball, uh, and that first starts with our defensive staff, led by Blake Baker, our defensive coordinator. Uh, we return our co-defensive coordinator, uh, DJ Smith, our uh, assistant head coach, secondary coach Al Pogue, our defensive edge coach Kevin Peoples, and our defensive tackle coach Al Davis. Those guys uh, have done an outstanding job with, with establishing our identity of wrecking havoc in, uh, in death row defense, and we're very appreciative of those guys staying apart. You know, um, I've always heard that uh, to be good on defense, you got to be strong up the middle. At the defensive tackle position, we return all you know, five of our key contributors uh, at the defensive tackle position, starting with uh, Jaden Jernigan, Realist George, Christian Williams has had an outstanding summer, Josh Landry. We've got two younger guys, Marquise Graciel and Jalen Marshall, who are really working to become uh, the players that they want to become. Um, Darius Robinson, who started for us last year on the interior, provides, provides position flexibilities here uh, today, um, uh, representing the University of Missouri uh, as one of our players. He's going to slide out and play some edge position as well as play uh, the interior defensive tackle position. Um, defensive edge is probably the position that we have the biggest question marks on our defense, but feel like we've answered those questions. Johnny Walker, who uh, has been with our program going on four years, was in that initial recruiting class that I've had, has uh, really bought into Coach Russell's strength program and Liz uh, Stewart's nutrition program, has done an excellent job adding weight, 262 pounds right now, the fastest he's been. Him and D-Rob uh, Darius will play our, our edge position. They'll be in competition with some transfers, Joe Moore, whose dad is a uh, all-time leading rusher at the University of Missouri, Niles Gaddy, Austin Firestone transfers, uh, guys who can contribute. We have two freshmen, Ja'Kai Lang, who played all spring um, and uh, moved DJ Wesselock, who played linebacker for us last year, back to his most natural position, which is defensive end, and then Serene. 
Um, those guys look to contribute at the, the DM position. At linebackers, we got two veteran linebackers, both with over a career 100 tackles, uh, somewhere around the combined 250 tackles, 34 tackles for loss, 10 sacks between uh, Tyron Hopper and Chad Bailey, uh, two SEC proven guys. But we've now added some depth. Chuck Hicks, who was injured all last year, uh, returns in, 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 in a junior college transfer country, as we call him, but Tristan uh, Newsom, uh, along uh, with, with uh, Damian Wilson, um, uh, Brayshawn Littlejohn and, and uh, um, Will Norris are our linebacker core. At the corner position, uh, we've got uh, Chris Abrams Drain and Ennis Rakestraw both returning. Uh, very excited about the amount of production. Both of those guys combined had 25 uh, 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 pass breakups last year. Uh, Chris is just an outstanding young man, uh, was in that initial recruiting class that I assigned uh, at the University of Missouri, started as a wide receiver, made the move over to defensive back uh, in the last game of the season, his freshman year, and hasn't looked back from that point on, has been an excellent player and contributor, uh, but he's an even better teammate, works extremely hard. He's a great father to his son, Kylan, and uh, very excited about what kind of season he can have. My first viral moment as, the SEC, as an SEC head coach, which I've had a few, uh, was when we got Ennis Rakestraw to sign and commit. Uh, Ennis is going into his third season starting for us um, and, and has added, uh, weighs 193 pounds, uh, has added muscle, great work ethic, been a leader for our football team. Uh, but even more than that, he's a 4.0 student uh, and very proud of, of what he's doing. We've added, uh, uh, continue to add depth and competitive depth there, but we do have uh, Drayden Norwood, who plays corner for us from, North, uh, from Arkansas, Fort Smith, Arkansas, is our third corner, actually had an interception against South Carolina last year, so feel very strong about the corner position. Lastly is our safety position. Um, both our safeties have over a career 100 tackles apiece. J.C. Carlisle uh, was, again, in that fir first class that we recruited. Uh, has uh, three interceptions last year, I think, which tied him for second for returning start for returners. Joseph Charleston, over 100 tackles. Dalen Carnell, ball hawk, had, over three, had three interceptions and multiple fumble recoveries. We added two transfer safeties from the state of Florida, Trevez Johnson from the University of Florida, and then Sidney Williams from Florida State. Uh, we also have a true freshman. Marvin Burks, we have a, a redshirt freshman, Isaac Thompson, and a redshirt freshman, Tyler Hibbler. So feel very good about the, the way that safety room and the defense in general lines up. Again, return a lot of production, but like I tell those all guys all the time, nobody cares about what you did last year. It's about what we can do this year that's going to be important, and we've got a lot to prove. On special teams, we return uh, the thicker kicker. As uh, most people know him, I like to call him Harrison Mevis, uh, but, but we do also have Blake Craig coming in as a freshman. We have a punting competition between Riley Williams and Luke Bauer uh, uh, and look forward to those two guys. Riley uh, brings the uh, foreign, uh, foreign uh, flair with him as he's a native from Australia. Deep snapper Brett LeBlanc and, and Trey Flynn, a transfer from Washington Baptist University. Uh, very excited about those guys. Feel like we should be very deep and competitive in the special teams position. On the offensive side of the ball, um, it all starts up front. We've got to improve on the offensive, si off offensive line. Um, we, we start, uh, it starts for us on the left side with Javon Foster, uh, who's here today, a native of, of Michigan, uh, who chose to come back uh, last year, and we appreciate that. Him uh, and Xavier Delgado both have 28 starts apiece at the left guard, left tackle position, so that, that provides a lot of comfort for that side. Uh, Armand Mimbo, who started the last four games for us at right tackle, will move to the left guard position. We added a transfer, Marcellus Johnson, who has 32 career starts in his career from Eastern Michigan will now play uh, at the right tackle position for us. We added Cameron Johnson from the University of Houston, who has 16 career starts. Um, he'll battle with, with uh, Connor Tolleson at the center position uh, and or the, the, the right tackle or left guard or right guard position. Every position is open for competition. But we've also got a lot of guys who are competing for any playing time. Val Erickson, uh, uh, Makai Lee, EJ, Mitch Walters, uh, Drake Heismeyer, Tristan uh, Wilson. All of these guys are very capable. Look for Logan Reichert uh, to continue to push 
for playing time, and, and there, there, there is an open competition for every position. We've got to protect the quarterback better uh, from last year, and we've got to be more effective on first and second down running the football in order for us to efficiently score points. The running back position, we return our top two rushers and Cody Schrader. What a story Cody is. Cody's a transfer to us. He started at Truman State um, and walked on for us last spring. He does everything right. Um, he's a graduate of our university, uh, is there seven days a week, works extremely hard as a social media influencer through his workouts. Uh, but he is a, a tremendous story to go from a walk on to the leading rusher at the University of Missouri and to be the leader that he is. I'm very proud of Cody. Uh, we return Nate Pete. Uh, Nate. Uh, he was the fastest offensive player that we have on his time, time 40s. Very excited about what he can contribute. And then we've got three other guys who are going to be contributing for us. Um, Jamal Roberts, Michael Cox, um, uh, Tavares Jones. Uh, all of those guys at the running back position have an opportunity in fall camp to prove who is going to be the guy who, number one, can protect the quarterback, two, uh, create explosive plays with their feet, uh, and then three, can consistently uh, secure the football and catch the ball out of the backfield. At tight end, we return Tyler Stevens, uh, Max Wisner, and then we've added two true freshmen, Brett Norfleet and Jordan Harris. I look forward to that position to continue to grow. Our wide receiver room is the deepest position with great competition there. We have moved Luther Burden from the X position to the slot wide receiver position with the uh, transfer of Dominic Lovett, who was first team All-SEC, to another school. That allowed us to move Luther and Makai Miller into that slot position uh, and look forward to those guys being very good and comparable uh, to what we've had in the previous years uh, uh, at, at that position. Theo Weiss and Mookie Cooper, uh, two excellent uh, upperclassmen, along with Dennis Jackson. Those guys provide, sp provide speed uh, and toughness and, and experience. Jermaine Wayne, Demarion Houston uh, are guys who look to contribute. And then we've got three true freshmen, Josh Manning, Marquise Johnson, and Daniel Blood. Not only will this group contribute on uh, at the wide receiver position, blocking on the perimeter, catching balls, creating explosive plays, but I look forward to this position to contribute on special teams as well and embracing their role and doing whatever it takes to win. And I think that sums up everything, no, nah, quarterbacks. Uh, at the quarterback competition, um, you know, Brady Cook played, was our starter last year. Uh, Brady was injured throughout the spring and, and looks to be returning to form. Uh, look forward to him uh, coming back. And, and, and um, he's going to have his hands full holding on to that position with Sam Horn and Jake Garcia. Both of those guys are very competitive. In fact, they played in the 2020 state championship game in the state of Georgia, Collins Hill versus Grayson, I believe. Uh, Jake reminds us that he got the win that year. Sam reminds us that the next year they went undefeated and won it as his senior year. So all three of those guys have their own strengths and college experiences. Uh, Dylan Leibel, a transfer, junior college transfer, is also competing for that job, and we look to have a very strong competition uh, at the quarterback position. Um, that is probably the most efficient roster update that I've ever provided, and I tried to kill as much time as I possibly could <laughs> so that I would not answer any question too uh, crazy today and, and trend on Twitter. So let's see how we did. All right, so with that, I'll open it up for questions. Right, we do have a little bit of time for sure. Yeah, right. I was hoping we didn't, to be <laughs> honest. All right, Avery, Kinsey, and Jim have microphones. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll. Well, good. I think Coach is helping me point out uh, Bob Holt right here in the second row. Oh, I, I was in – Gus called me last week, told me I got to make sure Bob gets the first question. <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate the confidence. Um, you, you're bringing in an offensive coordinator. I assume he's going to call the plays. How tough a decision was that? What went into that? And if, yeah. if you're not calling the plays, how, how, how tough is that for you to give, give that up? Yeah, we, we have a, a, a sign in our team room says, embrace your role, put the team first. Uh, and at the end of the season, it was clear to me that, that we were ineffective on the offensive side of the ball. And it starts with being retrospective on what do you do as the leader of the team, as the leader of the offensive side of the ball, what, what, what are the issues? And uh, I, I wasn't giving us the best advantage that we could have offensively to be successful. And so it was my estimation that I needed to embrace my role more as the head coach uh, and, and do the things that, that needed to be done there uh, and turn over the play calling to somebody else. I, I do not plan on calling 
calling plays. I plan on being involved on the offensive side of the ball, just like I am on special teams and on the defensive side of the ball as the CEO of the organization. Um, but hired Kirby Moore, who's got a similar offensive uh, vision and philosophy of I do, a low ego, high output guy who's got a great understanding of the pass game and play action and um, is an absolute grinder, loves to watch tape, is a tremendous teacher, a low, uh, low ego, high input kind of guy. Uh, and so look forward to working with him and the rest of the offensive staff uh, to put our players in position to be successful. And, you know, I, I, I tell him all the time, if we can just average one more touchdown a game, you, you, we're going to be in really happy at the end of the season. So we're in that constant quest to find one more touchdown. Uh, but uh, I have no, uh, no qualms about handing it over to somebody and, and feel like uh, that Kirby will do an outstanding job for us. Okay, we'll stay right behind Bob in the next row, right behind Bob. Hi, Coach. Clark Brooks on three and SEC StatCat. Your offenses are consistently near the top of the conference and using at-snap motion rates. Paired with your wide zone approach, could you really expand on how that helps create explosives for your offense? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we really believe that in order to utilize the wide zone effectively, you've got to create um, – either single gap spacing or you got to try to create rotational force on the defense. And so by utilizing motions, you usually get um, the safety rotation, um, which in an eight man front or in a, a quarters look, then you're going to create a, a potentially create an extra gap on the weak side of the formation or even on the strong side of the formation. And so that that's in essence what we're trying to do um, now with the split flow opportunities that you have and team defenses back gapping. Um, so to speak, that, that allows you also to, combined with motion, create some confusion in the, in the, in the gap fits. Um, you know, the, the emphasis on the outside zone is to create um, um, horizontal stretch to create a vertical seam. And you give the illusion of running laterally, getting the defensive line movement, and then you try to create a seal on the backside and create the, a vertical cut. Uh, if you can do that while creating some motion and getting some overlap or eyes uh, in, in defensive rotation, you're, you're, you got a shot. Coach, we'll go to your middle section on the right, about halfway back. Yeah, Coach, Brooks Austin, Dogs Daily. I think I looked on your roster. I think there's a dozen kids on your roster from the city of St. Louis. How important is it to recruit that city and that area in your state? And uh, what did you learn about your football team last year, giving Georgia a pretty close scare right there? Yeah, we believe in uh, the best players playing for their home state schools. Not only is that a, a benefit of uh, the opportunity for their families and their people to get to watch them play, uh, but it's also a benefit for them to build their brand. You're never more marketable outside of your own home footprint, uh, as seen by what what's occurred with Luther Burden and his uh, branding opportunities and even uh, our defensive players uh, creating their own pizza brand and, and several other opportunities there. Obviously, St. Louis for us so far has been a very good uh, area for us, but we're also very adamant in recruiting uh, Kansas City, uh, two very large top 50 metropolitan uh, areas, uh, top 50 media markets, and, and we've got to control those and own those, pick the best players that we can that fit our schemes and culture uh, to play for us, and we feel like that's how you build a consistent winner um, you know last year close doesn't count uh, so I don't, I don't really care about how close we played this team or that team that has nothing to do with what we're trying to accomplish this year what matters to us is the details and execution to finish on the right side of the game um, and so the only thing I learned about our team is that we're resilient in the face of adversity. You know, at two and four, it could have gone a lot of different ways, but our team battled back even after uh, a very difficult call against Kentucky. Uh, our team still battled and found a way to become bowl eligible and, and very proud of the resilience that that took. And again, I think the biggest sign to me that we are moving and our team believes in what we're doing is the retention of 18 returning starters on our team guys that had the opportunity to leave and go play at other places or go pursue their dreams of playing in the NFL chose to come back and continue their development under our leadership. And, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to those guys for that opportunity. Coach, we'll go in the aisle in front of me. Michael, on, the, on this in your aisle, front, right in front. Yeah, Michael, Casagrandeal.com. Just wondering, what do you think, how do you, or how do you see AI impacting the way you coach and the way college football is played? I have no thoughts on AI in college football. All right, we'll go right up here in the front, front right, front row. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, Jordan Davis, USA Today. Um, you already highlighted the talent you guys have on the defensive line and you, the, the edge, edge rushers that you guys already have. Um, can you speak about Niles Gaddy and you know how he's adapted to the change, having transferred here from Jackson State, and what do you see in him? Yeah, I think Niles has come in and, and really been hungry uh, to learn. Uh, obviously, there's a steep learning curve, uh, having this being his third school, how we do things around our program in comparison to what he's done in the past. It's different. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just how we do it here. Um, and so he's adamant about trying to figure that out um, and putting himself in a position to compete once we hit the ground uh, on July 31st when we report to camp. So he's done all the things that we've asked him to do. He's been excellent in the weight room, um, but he's trying to get up to speed uh, because once we start – uh, fall camp then every competition you got to be at your best every day and, and that room is so deep there's so many potential players again uh, you can't have a bad day or you're going to fall on the depth chart and, and that's the way you want it that's the way great programs are built and and uh, we're continuing to evolve to that situation coach we'll go over to our right hand side across the way about four rows back hey coach uh Ike Jones with the War Report. You mentioned Luther Burden's going to be sliding into the slot. Is that simply just to replace Dominic Lovett there? And then secondly, I want to ask Brady Cook, dealing with the injury, how has he really embraced the new quarterback competition that's coming in? Yeah, I mean, there's no replacing Dominic Lovett. Uh, Dominic Lovett's a, his own player and, and has his own unique characteristics and competitive spirit and wish him the best in his new opportunity. Uh, we want Luther Burden to be uniquely Luther uh, in the slot position, a bigger body, a guy who is going to have more free access, different route combinations that uh, that he's going to use within Kirby's offense. And him and Makai Miller's similarities are going to allow for those guys to play off of each other where we're not as uh, just dependent on one, maybe one person. And when that guy's not in, you know, it's definitely not a position or play to the slot. So uh, exi excited about that. Was there a second question that I'm forgetting? Yeah, Brady Cook. Um, you know, look, everybody would like to have things handed to him. I mean, they're, they're, but uh, competitors know that the – the, the only thing better than a little competition is, best comp, uh, is more competition. And, and Brady is one of the most relentless competitors that we have on our football team. Um, he competes every single day, whether it's running the stadiums or how he eats or how he trains. And uh, he's one of those edgers, man. He ain't ever letting anybody get an edge on him. And, and so that's consequently caused both Jake, Sam, and Dylan to really embrace that competition. And they know they got a long way to go. But the reality of it is we got to complete vertical balls down the field out side of the numbers and, and push the ball vertically down the field and we've got to complete them and whether that was injury or protection or whatever it was last year it's got to get fixed and whoever's going to give us the best opportunity to do that is going to be our quarterback and and uh, they're all going to have their opportunities and and uh, look forward to that competition Okay, coach, we'll go in this middle section to our right, right on the aisle. Andy Witchery on three. What are the conversations like in the conference when the SEC is pushing for uniform legislation with some schools such as Missouri have helped kind of support or shape the state laws that have uh, advantages for those schools? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to let the administration um, and uh, the presidents and the ADs and the commissioner work together on that side of it. All I know is what I've, I'm responsible for right now uh, and what the state law is right now for the University of Missouri, and that's what's going to affect us uh, currently, and, that, and that's what I'm going to operate on. And, and uh, there, there's a lot of things that we wish were, but we actually know what is right now in college athletics, and I'm going to embrace what is and what currently is uh, the reality on, on the feet, uh, boots on the ground or cleats in the grass, so to speak. And so uh, my, our state legislature, and I'd like to thank uh, Governor Parsons, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, uh, Attorney General Bailey, uh, uh, Senator Rowden, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, uh, um, uh, or, or uh, Curtis Gregory, uh, Dean Plotcher, Speaker of the House, all those guys and working really hard to, to try to do what they can that's in the best interest of our student athletes at the University of Missouri and providing them the opportunity to uh, utilize their name, image, image, and likeness to the best of their benefit. And, and uh, there you go. Coach, we'll stay in that same section right here in second row. Yeah, uh, Nick Alvarez, Eli.com, or AL.com. Eli.com, Eli. I like that. So do I. Uh, 
I think that's good. That's what, cool. do you tell, what do you tell Jake and some of the other transfers you have coming in about the level of play that's expected in the SEC and some of the unique challenges that this conference provides? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anybody's blind to the fact that the best of the best play in our league. I mean, it's produced the most number of NFL draft picks, 16, 17, 18 years in a row. So I think anybody that, that uh, knows what they're getting into when they get in this league. Um, but at the end of the day, it's football, football's football, and their te past experiences and talents. Um, you know, it says in the Bible, your gift will make room for you and bring you in front of great men. And they've obviously been given a great gift and, and opportunity to play this game. And so I want them to rely on that and not put too much pressure on them about what the stage is that they're playing in. Here we have time for two more. We'll start in front of me, about three quarters of the way back. Drew. Uh, Coach Drink with Trudy Armand, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. As you hired Kirby Moore from Fresno State and you guys put your heads together, uh, you went through spring practice. What position group or groups did you feel like as a staff improved the most offensively since you know that's, that seems to be the side of the ball you want to improve on the most going into the season? Yeah, I think the uh, – I think the wide receiver room is the team is the area that we have to improve on the most, uh, just because the amount of talent and depth that we have there, and those guys have got to be key contributors. Um, I, and then I would say that the offensive line is um, still a work in progress. You know, midway through spring, we lost our offensive line coach. We were able, able to hire a, a tremendous offensive line coach in Brandon Jones, and has got a, a tremendous amount of experience and expertise in what we're trying to do on the offensive side of the ball, and he's transition seamlessly. So those guys working together, trying to get our best five uh, in the rotation is going to be critical for us. And it's going to take us a couple of weeks. Obviously, we're going against a tremendous defense. And, and uh, you know, that competition every day is only making our guys better. But I love the way our guys are attacking. And, um, you know, offensively, there, there is uh, there's a sense of purpose and there's a sense of something to prove uh, for those sides, for those guys on that side of the ball. And, and uh, I, I, I have a lot of confidence in, in what they're going to do this year. Coach, we'll take one final question to your right, middle section, all the way in the back. Hey, Coach, Brendan Kerner, Lake Oconee News. But uh, you talked a little bit about Sam Horn earlier. He's a dual sport athlete who uh, plays baseball for y'all as well. How would you say that's helped him um, on his football journey? And how does, he, how does that help him um, with the competition and the chemistry of that quarterback room? Yeah, um, obviously, I think Sam going out there, um, he was injured about, I think, maybe his fourth fourth opportunity to, to throw but you know he went out there versus TCU and three three you know through three innings at about 95 to 96 off the mound I think that confidence in his ability that ability to go out there and use his natural talent to play at an elite level um, has translated over to the football field you know when you come in um, and you're learning and you're unsure of yourself and you're not getting maybe the game reps that you you wanted to uh, maybe there's some like am I really going to be good enough? And then he goes over in baseball and, and goes out and is throwing that thing 95, 96 for three innings. I think he realized, yeah, I got, I've got the ability. I've just got to put it all together. I've got to put it all together. And it, it wasn't just about um, the natural talent. Sam is a naturally talented young man. It was about uh, everything else off the field, whether it's controlling his diet to, to make sure that his diabetes is uh, in, in, in uh, under control, making sure that his weight was adjusted, making sure he's getting the sleep, making sure his grades are right. Um, the best players have low drama lives off the field, and Sam's not a drama guy. Don't make that don't make that assumption. But you know, he just getting the grades, adjusting to college athletics, learning. I think this spring, having to have that baseball, football, spring football, all that together has really caused him to really get a focus. Um, and he has really been uh, – he had a great spring and tremendous summer and look forward to seeing what he does when his opportunity is presented to himself uh, in fall camp. Coach, thank you for your time this afternoon. M-I-Z.